Hi, Jennifer LaHaye here with Dyslexia is not a dirty word. No, so it's not. You're not going to believe who this is. It's like, I feel like I should kiss her ring. No. <laughs> this is Marilyn Zecker. She is a math multisensory genius, and she is going to drop some wisdom on us today. We're here in Baltimore, Maryland. We're at a leadership conference, and I have had the honor and pleasure to get to know Marilyn. You know my new Maryland BFF, my like new Baltimore best friend now? Yeah. Can I call you that? <laughs> so Marilyn is going to share some great knowledge for teachers, for parents in math, and it's going to kind of, um, she's going to kind of flip the switch for she's going to give us some um, really great information so Marilyn can you explain the connection between math and language well it's very short uh, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it but we know that language impacts the way students learn retain math mm -hmm. the way they retrieve their math facts we know that early experiences with with math involve children visualizing math and quantity relationships mm -hmm. much with the visual hemisphere of the brain but when we start retrieving those more difficult math facts we use more of the language hemisphere mm -hmm. so learning multiplication for students with dyslexia mm -hmm. is often very difficult and it there are things teachers and parents can do which can really help them to do complex math concepts, but with easy language and easy math facts. I love this. She's, I'm telling you, when you start talking to her, it's just like, I just want to like just soak it all in. You've got so much, <laughs> I just, I want to be like a little math sponge yeah. with you, Marilyn. So what would you like teachers to understand about math instruction that maybe they don't understand or maybe they've never been taught to think about Well, it. first of all, you need to know there are children in your class mm -hmm. who will have dyslexia and they may or may not be identified. So they're there. Okay. They're there, right? They're there. Yeah, they're, they're in there. your classroom. Right. One in five. Mm -hmm. And so typical class of students with 30 children, you got six who have language-based problems. Mm -hmm. Be aware of that and be aware that there are children who need you to speak very clearly and when you introduce a new concept it has to be really clear they need to see it with something you put in their hands mm -hmm. they need to understand it and your language must be repeatable retrievable and something that's memorable because they take your language home with them to do their homework and they have to be able to expand and remember that so remember so when you're doing something like perimeter and area mm -hmm. use the same words all the time perimeter is the distance around uh -huh. area is the space covered that is so good I love that I love that give us those three things again they need to be the language needs to be language repeatable retrievable memorable because the child carries that it's not just pushing the numbers around where do I put the one when I regroup why do I do it they need to see the meaning behind the math and you do that by putting something in their hands so that the memory sources in the brain come from all over the brain the hands the visual the auditory the tactile kinesthetic let them see the math touch the math feel the math and then it's memorable Okay, so is there any tips or thoughts you that you would like to share? Just some general yeah, math yeah. tips. So, you have children in your classes or you have children at home. Use easy math facts to teach a new concept. We would never take a third grade student who's not reading and say, stop reading, stop teaching him to read. Mm -hmm. But how many children do we say, give him a calculator? We need to use easy number facts to teach new concepts and continue to work on those skills that take our students with dyslexia a little bit longer. Never stop teaching them they're not math facts. Calculators are great and I love them. Mm -hmm. But you can teach with a restricted set of number facts for new material and practice it until the skills and the concepts are in place and then keep expanding. And don't always talk in a slow monotone. Sometimes you gotta get excited about the math. Don't suck all the energy out of the room. You gotta make sure that the children right. enjoy math. It's fun, it has to be their favorite thing to do. Feel the love. Feel the love. Feel the love. And um, you brought about manipulatives. Yes, manipulatives. They are time consuming, they're messy. Children play with them, but they're also essential. Yeah. The more you use them, up including through algebra, 
the more the students will learn to see them as learning tools, they will use them efficiently and effectively, and then they have an impact. But the goal of using manipulatives is to get rid of them. So they introduce the new concept. You teach the child to do pictorial representations to solve problems. That's efficient and it's portable memory. And then we want to get to the abstract with only numbers. But to get there, they have to see the math and they have to have something in their hands to make it memorable. And that includes to algebra. And I love that you talked about the older student, the yeah. algebra student. Mm -hmm. This is not your first and second. This is not your primary or your elementary. No. This is your middle school you kids. You can begin teaching linear functions. For you algebra teachers out there, y equals mx plus b, start with the word problems. It's real life math. Have them build those linear functions with something like unifix cubes or beads on a shoestring. And they can build that constant rate of change in starting value. And then they start to apply it to word problems and the algebra makes sense. Sense. I'm going to tell you what, you guys don't even know luck how lucky I am and you are that we are just, Marilyn is dropping information bombs left and right. Now Marilyn is a national speaker, she travels all over the country, does professional development training mm -hmm. for teachers, works with kids in a variety of ages, uh, ages, grades, skill sets, gifted. And I teach online classes. She teaches online classes. Marilyn, you've got to tell us and how to get a hold of you. And that, can't works, stand it. that works for home educators as well. Ugh. I believe in teaching, reaching all those people who interact with our children who have impact by language, and that includes our ESOL teachers. Our ESOL teachers are working with children who struggle with language in a different way. And the same thing that works for simplifying that instructional language for dyslexic students also works for students at risk, students who are far behind and have major gaps in their concepts, and also our other students who are at risk for language disability. Marilyn, you've got to tell us how to get a hold of you. If ah. people want to do a webinar with you or they want to be trained by you by the master, she's like Math Yoda. <laughs> well, you? I don't know if I want to go there, but <laughs> no, I, uh, I work with a nonprofit in Rockville, Maryland. It's called the Atlantic Seaboard Dyslexia Education Center. The acronym is ASDEC, A-S-D-E-C dot org. And we teach a new math section about every two months by distance, and I also teach it on, in, on site. I'll be in two locations this year, down at the Key Learning Center in Asheville, North Carolina, at Trident Academy in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina this summer. She's great. So if they can go to ASDEC, is it dot? ASDEC.org. They can find you and they can locate mm -hmm. you and your material and your webinars. And oh, and multisensorymath.com. Multisensorymath.com. I'm going to put that up there so you guys can reach it. Marilyn, thank you so much for sharing time with us. We bonded over this last day and a half. And Marilyn, uh, oh, by the way, you guys need to subscribe. If you're not, share it with a neighbor. Uh Right? Marilyn Dyslexia is not a dirty word. It's not a dirty word. Trust me, she knows. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Marilyn.